Bob. So I'm, you know, I'll focus on the outside shape for a little bit here. And I'm using my, the ebony pencil. I think the ebony shows up more clear on these, uh, on these demos on Zoom than, my, than a regular 2B pencil. But I would recommend that you guys use the, the 2B pencil. So this is the the eye line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and start to do use this to place the eye sockets. So the eye sockets are gonna be they have this kind of a basic shape. Kind of like uh, glasses going over your eyes, right? something like that. Of course, I'll keep erasing and, and adjusting. Uh, but I see that line, you got to make sure that is, uh, I said this about eight inches. So that's pretty close. And then uh, I want to do that. And also, put in the cavity of the of the nose. So that's the you know the. The shape for the teeth, the psychomatic bones. The mandible. You know, throw, throw some of these names out, you know, we've got to try to memorize some of this anatomical, you know, landmarks. Uh, So it's a little crooked. I don't know if it's my camera here and my drawing. It looks crooked on the screen. And then I'll I want to jump in here and start cutting this shapes. Smaller line segments. I tried to take those photos for you as, as accurate as I could, but there, I could help but note that there were maybe some distortion because of the camera. I think the jaw might have come out a little too big. So just watch out for that. Now the the uh, the eye sockets uh, they project. Out of the out of the cranium here. There's a see this. What I'm outlining here. This uh, becomes part of the. It's a big frontal bone right here. I'll describe it in more detail. I can see some of the sutures up here uh, that make up the frontal bone. And that comes all the way down. That frontal bone comes out to like 
about the line here, this line where you've got the, uh, the eye line. I'm just gonna indicate it just, you know, to see some more information about the anatomy, this, about the skull. And the, the cheekbone, this that I'm going over right now, this part, this I this is the psychomatic bone. And you might be able to see on the photo, there's like a, a, a line that goes through there. And so that is, that is the psychomatic bone. So that, that's the actual name of your cheekbone. When they, when they talk about, you know, having high cheekbones, it's the psychomatic bone. And I might still go back and make some adjustments. I'm, I'm liking how this is turning out. Uh, but I know that there's some adjustments to be made. Um, I can see some misshaping happening, but you know, just I gotta get started somehow, right? Uh, so you got the frontalis muscle, and uh, you know, this it should be a little bit wider here. These are the widest. Uh, portions of the skull here, these two. And there's two bones that go on the side, like they do this and on the other side. Did anybody take a biopsy, take anatomy for before, like in high school, like they either took biology. They might already have all these names Mem you know, memorize. So those are the, the parietal bones, two bones. And then as, as I go down here, the bottom portion is called the mandible, right? Or in Spanish, la mandibula. If you guys like to watch boxing, that's a, when somebody gets knocked out, you're watching boxing in Spanish. It's un golpe a la mandibula. That'll, that'll do it. That will knock out the, the opponent. And on top of the mandible is this part that is divided into two parts. Which is, does anybody know the name of this, of this muscle, of this bone here? I'll give you extra credit. I thought I had a biology major. Maybe it's a drawing one. Which part of the muscle you said? Of the, of the skull, this, this one right here. It sounds like, like mandible, but it's not mandible. Is it maxima? Yes. Oh, okay, because I was thinking of the same one, but I was not sure. Yeah, this is the maxima. Or, yeah, oh, that's the one. And so it's two, it, there's a, there's a separation here. Sometimes it's hard to see. This is a plastic skull, so it's hard to see it on there, but there is a, no, this one is just one, one whole bone. Right now, I'm just gonna do the teeth as a, as a group here, and then I'll, this guy's missing some teeth. You can probably see that on the, the photograph. So the maxilla, the mandible, the psychomatic, and then there's also, there's two, 
nem sou bom só porque so that's a good start but it looks a little crooked I'm gonna erase it and make the corrections and I thought I I know I came in here earlier and I got a bunch of pencil ready. And now I can't find it. I have to sharpen this one. I don't like the fussy line that it's. I thought it was all set up for class and I was like, I can't find my pencils. So on this. This time around, when I start going, I'm gonna try and finish it so we can so, so I can finish all the all the three drawings. So by the time of, of Halloween, we should be done with the with the whole anatomy of the face. Or by the Day of the Dead, which I think very appropriate to focus on, because there's so many skulls for those days that, are, that we see. So now I'm gonna try and make it as as accurate as I can. I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna bring it in closer. So that was just so you could see how my the size that I'm going to do the 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 my drawings and so you could see how you can place your drawing so that you can have enough space for at least the front and the side view on the same on the same page. I like to start here with the, with the eye sockets. And see, I have this mirror. You can see the whole view of my my office, my coffee, and my cookies, and my. But I, I like to have the mirror so that I can, uh, you know, see the reflection of my drawing. I don't know you can you can see it there. And if it looks good on the reflection, it looks I'm okay. But I'm looking at it, and one eye looks bigger than the other. So I have to fix it. So you always want to have a mirror so that it gives you the, the alternate view, the, the reverse view, and then that way you can spot any, any mistakes. So I think this one is big. So 
So maybe I can, I can you know, reduce the size of this eye socket. I gotta make this more proportioned here. How's that look? That's looking better. And also this, there was too much distance here. See so when when I when I work on a on a portrait, I whatever I do on one side, especially if it's you know like a front view, whatever I do on this side, I try and right away and jump to the other side. I can, I developed that discipline when you know when I was learning how to draw eyes, and I was sure you guys had the same problem when you draw one eye, and it's really hard to make the other eye exactly the same. So I remember reading. It was better to draw them exactly at the same at the same time, you know, step by step. What you would do to one, you'd do to the other. Uh, sir, I have a question. Okay. Uh, just to make sure you're going off, are you going off by like the picture of the skull that you just sent us or like, are you like actually looking at the skull yourself? Yeah, I have that same skull that I sent you the photo of. I have right here in front of me. Uh, so I send you a picture very much like the view that, that I have. So you can get, you can go by by that uh, by that photo as, as you're drawing. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. Thank you. Yeah. And like I, I mentioned, there's might be some slight distortion because of the cameras of the camera on the phone. I think this one was a little bit higher. I gotta pick this one up.
uh, sir, uh, I signed in from another device and I'm mm -hmm. asking if you could let me get in. Okay. Please, thank you. I might be able to see this on the photograph, right? This overlap and there's a big cavity here. A big hole there. You can actually like put your whole fingers, like two fingers fit in there. And that, all that gets is gonna get filled later on with the with the, the temporalis muscle. Like that muscle that you see move when you're chewing. It's one of the two muscles that's, that helps in, the, in chewing and breaking bones. Okay, that's better. Um, I'm, I'm not happy with that. Something's off here. Maybe this is too big. There's some things I gotta. That's the, that's the challenge when you draw anything perfectly, when you're looking at anything perfectly frontal, you know, in frontal view. Let's try one more try and I see what's what time is now. It's 2 30. You got time. And when I when I check your drawings, uh, you know, make sure that you're following this, uh, you know, this thing we've been, all, the thing we've been doing all semester with a, with our lines, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm not, if you hold the pencil like this, you end up curving, you know, doing a lot of this. And I think this, it helps you more in, in blocking in. Oh God, this, this line is straight as I can. And see like this, this is the bottom of the nasal cavity. If you follow that line, it lines up with the bottom of the psychomatic bone. And I'm, I'm drawing these because I was 
kept noticing some things are not quite straight and even. What's sitting up to this and this here. Now I can see that more clearly. So it's like I'm I'm drawing a grid. I have to, I won't have to do this, but I'm like, I want to get this right. And then I, I, I was looking here at my notes, right? These drawings that you also have access to, right? You see those lines and those. And those are going to help me draw the, well, also the, the back, well, the back view is going to be on another page. But this view, right? You see those lines are going to help me see, like, this line that is at the bottom of the nasal cavity lines up with the base of the, of the cranium. So on this drawing, I'll, I'll bring those lines over. Sometimes this happens, right? Like I'm like, like I've been drawing too long to make these mistakes, but like I have to make the corrections. There's no way around. With, with these references, I'm like, okay, I can see better. Like, you can see this looks a little, a little more wide than this side. So I can use these lines as, as references. So you want to get these as perfect as you can. As you're able to. So I keep looking back at the screen and I see some problems. I'm like, maybe it's the camera that is not right. I think there's no even.
move, move that line. Take that measurement. It checks out there. Now, when we when we take a look at the at these drawings, you know, done by by everybody in the class, <clears throat> you will see that they are they're all going to be slightly different, right? And I think that subconsciously, everybody's going to be drawing their own skull. Even though we have the same reference image, I think they will, they will all be portraits of everybody's own personal skull. I think that looks more accurate. <clears throat> This is what I'm trying right now. This like a nasal force. The rest of the 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 rest of the of the nose is is all cartilage. I'm going to do this measurement. I don't want to have to use a ruler, but I have questions. Two and a half. Okay, pretty good.
Now this, remember this part of the, of the skull, it's a cylinder. You know, the whole teeth, the teeth that are like a half cylinder, like a half circle. This thing about, I literally take a bite out of a sandwich. And also when we draw the lips over there, remember that they wrap around them. They're not, you know, they're not flat. Here it is. Let's move this in. That's much, <clears throat> much, much more accurate than before. I have a an eleven year old son, and uh, got a call from his teacher. She might I think he might be obsessive compulsive. 
He won't stop talking about trains. He's always talking about trains. He won't stop talking about you know trailers and trucks and and how they won't. I think I myself am somewhat obsessive compulsive. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he if he is. I don't, I've never been diagnosed, but you know the obsession with like. Sometimes you can't stop drawing. If the drawing doesn't look correct, I can't really go to sleep. I hope I can't stop mixing paint. So it's uh, as long as you can, as long as he's functioning, as long as you're a high functioning, obsessive compulsive. That thing there, I think that's much better. Get rid of these lines. I've been working on, on a on a painting and it has a <clears throat> it's a figure with a background of course and uh, just try to put a lot of color into it right uh, so I just, when these past days I've been mixing a lot of you know different blues for the sky different kind of like a sunset a lot of different transitions from the blue to green and to yellow and orange and uh, and then when I went to sleep oh I think all night I grabbed nothing but color mixtures it was, it was a pretty cool dream and I think that looks much better now one thing I want to I want to do is add some some details in, in the, especially up here, the, the brow. And there's a, because I have a light on this, I'm just going to do this uh, in a very planar way, very angular. So like I had mentioned this part here, zygomatic and the maxilla. And here's the change in, in the value here, the light, where the light hits it. And look, if you, I mean, I wanted, I wanted to do a little bit of drawing on the teeth because uh, there's a certain way you should draw the teeth so that when you draw them on a portrait, they don't, they don't become too prominent.
to like here, 15. You just kind of want to suggest them. You don't want to outline all of them. How many teeth do we have? Does anybody know? In total. Make sure that you're drawing along with us. At the close to the end of the class, I'll, I, I'm going to take a look and give you a work in progress grade. Do not be present to win. Be present to receive the grade. Uh, sir, I have a quick, a quick, another quick question real quick. Okay. Um, you still want us to to kind of do like not curve the line right just like yes don't curve the line i think not until the end of the semester okay yeah just making sure because yeah. um i'm trying to make sure i get everything right this is okay yes Gustavo, yeah. i think you're also somewhat of an obsessive compulsive right so uh yeah i've actually erased the drawing a bit uh, multiple times yeah it it's because i don't know why but when i draw skulls i always think it's like too wide yeah but then i realize oh it's not that it's wide it's just that it's missing the shading yeah yeah, yeah. The, once once you like add the shading it cuts up the space and it doesn't look as, as wide that's a yeah, that's a good observation. Yeah. What if uh, we haven't gotten the, the toned paper yet? Because right now I've been working on the on the regular white paper nine by twelve, but I still don't have the toned paper. But I'm working. Okay, yeah, as long as you're working, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I was thinking of getting the tone paper later and then redo the, the skull on the tone, tone paper. If that okay, is yeah, as long as you're, yeah, as long as you're working there. Okay, thank you. A little bit of a shadow shape here. Okay. 
Now over the weekend, I'm gonna try and go over there with some some white chalk. Cause I'm looking at the time. I want to make sure I have enough time to complete all these. All right, so this, the process I'm doing here by looking at the skull, we don't have, I don't have in front of me the, you know, the torso of this, the skeleton of the torso, but I'm gonna add a little bit of it just from the, uh, using the same notes that I have there on the, that I posted there on Blackboard. See this one here. Let me measure this. Uh, this is this is uh, about eight inches. So this is the one head measurement. You wanna you wanna make a note of that. Remember that when I say a one head measurement, it means the height of, of the head. We're gonna use those measurements when we transition to using the whole figure, to drawing the whole figure. And in a front view, the width of the shoulders is actually uh, two heads, the height of two heads. So this. If I go to the to the right and to the left, that would give me the width of the shoulders. Um, now I I do want to draw a little bit of the vertebrae of the neck. There's seven of them, but on this view, as you can see from this drawing, we only see about three and a little bit of uh, of a fourth one. So I want to I want to put that in, and I'm gonna I want to measure this, you know. So that's about from the chin up to the to the base of the nasal cavity. So this measurement, I'm gonna bring it down here. Let me tilt the camera. So this. It's the same as what we get to see of the, of the vertebrae of the neck. So in here, I'm gonna try and see there, there are the, the discs. At some point, if I'm gonna draw a cylinder, it's kind of like a cylindrical shape here. These bones of the neck and of the spinal column are very, they're very interesting. They have a lot of detail. I've, I've simplified them somewhat so that they're a little easier to draw. So this is the side view. They have these things called the spinous process. And then these little other dots this is a transverse process. See those there? And 
they're used as attachments, attachment points for the you know, different muscles of the neck, of the spine. So you, you can just measure with, like I'm doing with your fingers, you know, this measurement here. That's gonna give us a little bit of what we see of the neck. And then I'm gonna just section this off into I'm curving them because they're they're cylindrical, right? In that case, I am I am uh, to, to demonstrate, right? To demonstrate that they're cylindrical, I am curving the line. That's when I was doing that, right? Again, to make it very, uh, and you right here. There's 24, vertebrae in the spinal column. There's seven that make up the neck. They all have a, the ones that make up the neck have a certain name. The ones that make up the torso have a certain name. And the ones that make the lower back have another name. These are the cervical vertebrae. And I'm leaving a gap because of course there's like the cartilage. And so these, the transverse process, they're like little wings here. They get a little bit bigger as they go down. So you should have one, two, three, four. And actually, this one is the seven, the seven cervical vertebrae, the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth. You see also a little bit of that. That one there, the transverse process. And see this this point, the seventh one, this one here at the very bottom one, very bottom one, this this part, this is the spinous process. This you can feel that uh, you just like reach to the back of your of your neck, and you can feel it right next to the skin. You can just press on it and you feel it right there. And that's one, of, it's a point uh, that will help us in drawing the figure. It's, a, uh, it's called a, a type of bony landmark because the, the, there's certain points in the, in the figure where the skin attaches right next to the bone and it, they're points of attachment so that no matter what happens with a with our weight, 
it it's always in that phase, even if on an individual that may may have more weight than other people, you it'll be it'll still be noticeable. It'll be like a little dimple there. It's like in like on the knuckles, right? Like there's never going to be any any fat that attaches to the knuckles. Now see this measurement here that I'm doing from the chin up to the top of the nasal cavity. I'm gonna also measure it down here. But see this, now I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna curve my lines and do this. So I'm, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Let me tilt it a little bit lower. See this here is the, this is where I'm going to stop the, the drawing of, of, the, of the front view of the skull. This is the this is the pit of the neck of the neck. This is the sternum. Of course, you can feel that very clearly on, on your on yourselves. And this is uh, I'm just going to draw a little bit of the first rib. So th this is the front of the neck, and this is in the in the back of the neck, the inside, but the back of the neck, right? And then you have here. This is the first rib that attaches. To the neck. You see that on a little bit on, on this drawing. You see the rib, you want to think like there's a portion that is on the front, then another portion that goes back, and then the one that attaches to the spinal column. So like three, that's three, I mean, this is simplifying it, but just so you know what, what's happening. This is the front, the middle, and the back. But of course they're organic and they curve and then on top of the sternum, we have the clavicles. Here. Yeah. I only have one clavicle, and I'm just going to drop part of it because it helps uh, when we start to add the anatomy of, of the neck. Here. And the clavicles have a, they also have like, this, like I said, this is going to be, let me see what fits on here. Well, the clavicle does, it does fit, not the, the shoulders end, ends up, you can see a portion of, of this other bone. This is the scapula. This is the, the acromion process of the scapula that attaches to the clavicle. This is goes from the front of the of the torso to the to this to the scapula, which is on the back. Yeah. But this is the acromion process of the scapula. And that's the edge of the of the shoulders. And then this clavicle, just like the because it curves, you know, going back, just like the like the ribs, 
it has uh, just I'll make it very simple here. Also, like a front portion, then a portion that curves going back. So like one, two, and three. That's why you see that curve. When you look in the mirror, you know, you see that that they curve very gracefully towards the back. And uh, just to, you know, I'm gonna, I can do this here. Make them like rectangular prisms. to kind of see what happens. I'll go back and make it more, more curvy, but that's what they, how they go back. But I think this, this, is, this is good for our front view, and I'm gonna, you know, see if we can do all three views, I don't know. Looking at the clock there. There's a, a lot of, it takes a lot of time to, to make these drawings, you know. The, and then you'll see when we add the anatomy. So I find it fascinating. It does take a long time. So there, that is the front view. That's the front view for now. Just move it away a little bit here. Now look what I'm what I'm gonna do here. Uh, to do the side view, I'm gonna take this to the top of, and I'm gonna bring it over. Bring over this the height. Take it all the way to the edge. Of it. Just freehand it. It's it's good practice to try and freehand straight lines. Don't just get a ruler. Sometimes it's good to use a ruler, but sometimes just to train your hand and be able to control your hand. And then also the, the measurement for the for the bottom here, bring it over. And see, as I'm drawing this, I'm trying to, you know, look at this distance so that it looks even. I mean, it's a very sketchy, blurry line, but it's should help me. And then also, uh, you know, the eye line. And I keep looking at, at that as a reference and also the top of the paper to help me keep it straight. And I mean, it's not easy, but it's, it looks good. And then also the, like I had pointed out the base of the nasal cavity to help me place the zygomatic The mouth line as well here. The 
zygomatic and also the base of the cranium. Now I'm gonna what's I'm gonna hang this one right here next to my to my drawing. It'll probably be off the off the camera, off the view of the camera, but just put it there. <clears throat> measure this. I guess also I can bring the uh, this measurement. To the eye socket. Now I'm gonna turn over I also put a picture there of, I'm gonna go by the picture. You guys wanna go by the picture of the side view for what I'm gonna do next. And also this drawing, right? So I'm gonna switch over the skull.
was having some difficulties trying to place the the skull here in front of me. Looking at the time, I think we'll get done with the side view. I don't think we'll get done with the back view. We, using that reference, you, you guys can finish that one on over the weekend. Because I want to get this. Here. It always takes a while to get this situated properly. Let me see here, see. I think that's as good as it's gonna, it's gonna get. Mm, just make a line here. How we get situated. Now the, from this view and if you look at the, at the photos that I that I've given you, uh, there's a big mass to the cranium. So this I've got my my height, which is like about eight inches, right? I'm gonna make this. Uh, from the front view, the face is more like a like a like a rectangle, right? I mean, it's an oval, but it is it is uh, taller than it is wide. Uh, on the side view, it is it's more like a square. It's not a perfect square, but it is more more like a square. So I'm not, you know. I, in the big drawings that I have in the other room, I, I have some measurements to help me place it. But as long as you have something like what I've done here, you know, I've got this, you know, this measurement for the height. And so I kind of took that measurement and kind of brought it over. And so that kind of gives me like a square shape. So somewhere in there, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw the side view of the, of the skull. Now, the the nose itself, the meaty part of the of the nose, the meat and the cartilage is going to protect that out of this. So you want to just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You don't want to draw this line right next to the edge of the paper. You want to give yourself some space there. So something like let me show you. See something like that. So I'm gonna start to draw this. This is, see the tilt of the forehead? And you see that the, the very top of the, of the head is not here, it's somewhere in the back. You know, blocking it in. And then remember this line becomes important because it gives us the base of the, of the cranium. And then you have over here, you have the mandible. 
Now the nose is gonna project from here, but everything else pretty much gonna stay you know, very close to that line. Maybe the teeth will come out a little bit from there. So I gotta work myself within that, that shape. Now some, you know, some drawings, uh, if you look at anatomical books, uh, you know, human anatomy for artists, human anatomy for medical purposes, there's all kinds of discrepancies on the shapes and the, and the way that, that they're drawn, that the skull and the bones and the muscles are, are, are drawn. So this is the, bring back this line. That is the top of the nasal cavity, uh, right below the, the nasal bones. I'm using that and then I know I gotta, I can bring this all the way down here because that's the, the bottom of the nasal cavity then. on the mandible. And also this, I should have done that for God to see this. So if you do this, so you can find the center. And that ends up close to the to the ear canal. You know, some will close the ear canals will be somewhere around here. From that picture that I gave you there's a there's this bone, this bony projection here. This is, uh, becomes an attachment for muscles of the neck. This is the, the mastoid process. And from this angle, also you can see the, the tilt of the, of the eye socket. So again, this line becomes very important because we've got helps us with the nasal cavity, then the bottom also of the psychomatic bone. The psychomatic bone has this like little tail portion that is actually not part of the psychomatic bone, but it's, uh, you can pat this all, all along the side of your face, all the way, you feel the bone right there. You, know, you might want to do that right now. Just, you know, pat it, you know, you can feel the bone right next to your skin and it goes almost into your, your ear into your ear canal. So we can continue to kind of block it in here.
mapping out the shadow shape here. And remember this line, the eye line, it has to be in the right place. If it's too high, you end up with a very small brain. And then see if I, if I do this, if I, if I do this, then the skull looks like the skull of an ape. So as we build this anatomy, you don't want to end up giving yourself an ape-like face. That's why you got to have this line in the right place. See this, this area here is the ear canal and right next to it, that is the attachment to the mandible. That way sometimes you can hear, sometimes you can hear your, your jaw pop right there. But right next, you can hear it you know, very, very close. So we have huge brains. I mean, humans have huge brains. I think that's what main difference from the from the other apes. So humans have bigger brains than the other apes. Also, humans uh, had larger families than other apes. Just an interesting fact, I remember reading a, about this, uh, you know, humans have more sex than other apes. They have larger families. That's, that's why we've overpopulated the planet. And now let's see. So this this is looking pretty good here. Uh, now I'm gonna bring over also this measurement, uh, the base of the of the neck. I'll bring it over. Okay. 
the other day I was talking to another professor that teaches drawing and he was telling me that <clears throat> how come I don't use the the skeletons that we have here like I never seen you really use the skeletons the plastic ones that we have here um, you know like because they're not accurate uh, for one thing one big and something that I'm, I'll point out right now is uh, and also like you, you, <clears throat> right now you'll see a lot of uh, skeletons because of Halloween you go to the store and they have, they have skeletons for sale uh, you know plastic made out of plastic and in those skeletons, the vertebrae of the neck, they just hang straight down, right? They just kind of do this. But see, in, uh, in reality, what happens is that the, the neck, it curves. curves back like this very in a very graceful way. Because that so make sure you, you know like I brought I brought down this line right from the the seven cervical vertebrae all the way over. And that's how you, you would attach it. Now, see this line also, like you can bring this line all the way down and that can help you connect this. And that's where you stop it. And right, yeah, we just stop there. I was gonna keep going to talking about the way that it curves in the, in the spinal column. See, like we, I spent like all semester talking about the blocking and keeping it angular and no curving lines. And, I, and that's good, but there's a, there's a lot of beautiful curves, of course, throughout the figure. Uh, you know, always counterbalancing each other. <clears throat> now, let me see. So I'm going to, what am I gonna do? Let me, let me just erase this block in a little bit and I'll, and I will make some corrections. I think overall it turned out pretty, pretty good, I think. Yeah, sure. Uh, just to be uh, like accurate, the eight inches is from the top of the skull to the chin, right? Yeah, this is a, this is eight, and so I just and then I brought this over, so it kind of gave me gave me a square. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's about eight inches. Yeah, because uh, I was sketching this whole uh, time, and I realized the. Uh, the proportions, everything seemed off, no matter how much I kept correcting. And I think that that was my uh, issue is that it wasn't exactly uh, eight inches apart. So I'm trying to redo everything. Oh, and, and <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is as difficult as it gets, I think, drawing the face. Yeah, like I, I wanna go back, I'm, you know, I'm gonna come back tomorrow and maybe over the weekend and Monday, make this as, as accurate as I can do it so that I can, you know, have a good starting point for the, <clears throat> for the anatomy. But yeah, it's good that you that you're, you caught the mistake and you'll, you'll fix it. Yeah, because um, the forehead always looked too small. And, yeah. and, but ironically, everything else, the mouth, the eyes, not everything, it looked far too massive. Yeah. yeah, you probably had that, you had the eye line too high.
Oh, and for the um, the pastels, I had gone to uh, Michael's yesterday, but the only thing they had was pastel chalk pencils. Oh, okay. But uh, not really any name brand. All they had was uh, one called Generals. That's a that's a that's a pretty good brand. They make very good. I I've seen students buy those. I think those are pretty good. The generals they make they for years they made very good charcoal pencils. How much were they? Do you do you remember? Did you buy them? Yeah, like around forty five dollars. All they had was the twenty four pack. So did you buy them or no? Yeah, yeah, I bought them. I have them with me. Yeah, those. That's a good brand. Yeah. For some some time back, I had I had a student. She gifted me some of those, and they were they were on this this uh some years, some years ago. And I they were pretty good. See this bone, the uh, tail portion of this structure is uh, actually part of the, this bone right here, the temporal bone. And see also this, bring this line over. That's, that's right, that's this right here. See this that I'm gonna draw here. This is kind of like the outline of the frontal bone. And then here, a little bit lower here. <clears throat> Sir, I have a like a small question. Like, uh, I'm doing like both drawings on the same paper, like you are, mm -hmm. but um, mine are kind of like close together. Is that all right? Yeah, uh, we're, we're gonna focus, of course, here, adding the anatomy here and the neck. Uh, so as long as as there's good space here. We're not gonna get so much into the, we'll do the shoulder when we get into the whole figure, but right now it's just like this, you know, the neck, this part of the neck here, this general area. Yeah. Area. So as long as those are not overlapping or too close, you'll be 
you'll be okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering because like I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And see, this, this area is the, uh, it's another bone that goes from this side to the other side. And also makes up the inside of the, of the, of the skull. That one, I believe, that's the one I always have a hard time remembering the name. And that's called the sphenoid. The temporal bone is something like this area. On that, on the photograph, you might see a little bit of this projection. This is the nucleal notch. So more like, kind of like the mastoid process here. And it's used to, it's a, a very strong ligament that fills in this part of the neck that attaches right there. And that also like if you reach with your hand to the back of your skull, you feel a little indentation there. So you wanna make sure you put that in there as well. <clears throat> Something happened here to the Zoom. Can you are you guys still there? Yeah, I'm here. Still yeah. here. Okay, uh, just the the view changed on me here. All right. Like some of these measurements, they're like I, I brought over this line, right? And, uh, and we'll do the same thing with a figure, you know. But I mean, they're these proportions are simplified so that they help you make a better drawing. 
but in in some people will have a lot of questions like how come this actually drops a little bit lower than here and yeah in real life there's variations but we have to make this we say have to simplify this so we can better understand it and just kind of make a better drawing but if you if you're looking at like you might observe the yeah, there's some discrepancies to this to this rule but it just it just helps in you know you got to simplify things so that you can you know just kind of learn quicker and like make a better drawing So this, I think this, I mean, I can go back and work on this because it's 3.55. So I want to just do the neck and a little bit of the clavicles. And then that should give us enough time for me to check your drawings and give you a, a grade for today. Um, so now I'm going to separate this into seven sections, right? And so they're slightly tilted. And they're very slightly. Especially this bottom one, the, the seventh one. I've got three and then the fourth. I have too many lines, I have to get them up. It's confused. Start over. It's always it's always a little challenge. Now look at this drawing over here. Help me. Oh, sir, this could be an issue. Uh, I don't have a camera. Uh, can I send you an email with the progress? Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. Send me that. All right. So this is the here. This is the, the fifth. fifth or the sixth. No. It's kind of the top. So the one that holds up the uh, the cranium, the very first one, the it's called C one, C one, C two, C three, C four, but the top one is called the atlas. You know, reference to that mythological being that. The atlas that would hold up the world. Three, 
Now, I don't expect you to have this finished by the end of the class because this it gets complicated. Right? So you want to take your time and, and, and do it right. Don't just rush through it and like, I'd much rather it be done right than it, than it be done, than it be completed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And I want to add these little dots. I have them as highlights because that's where the, the muscles are going to attach. And also this, like on the drawing, I have a highlight. This is called the nuchal, the nuchal notch. And this is the nuchal ridge, like a projection. Also, a lot of the muscles are going to, a lot of the muscles from the neck are going to attach there. You want to think of it like a little mountain range, kind of growing out of there, you know, and it sticks out. Also, there's another ridge up here. Kind of like a point out of the, out of the, out of the forehead. You've probably seen these on yourself under some, you know, very strong lighting. And this is used by a muscle, this muscle to attach and grab on to. And I want to add the little spinous process. In the one of the drawing rooms, I have these drawing, you know, life size, you know, front, side, and back view. And then on, on the painting room towards the back, I I think last year I made another two views, like three quarter facing front, three quarter facing back. And uh, I intended to use them, you know, like you know, for these classes. Uh, but the ones that are three quarter view, I really like them. Like I, I don't even want to put any muscles on them. They, they uh, once you put the muscles on top of where you're gonna cover all the nice drawings that you did. Like these, you know, it's uh, we're gonna cover them up with. muscles and we'll lose all this drawing. I will admit I am still stuck on the first skull. I just keep having this strange issue where one side is has more width and space than the other. Yeah. Can't seem to fix it. You got the whole weekend to fix that. So it's already 404, so look. Let's just work on this a little bit more. Check your drawings.
there's some great anatomical websites. Uh, there's one that I that I'm uh, subscribed to, and it's very inexpensive. It's uh, like two dollars per month, and they have all these digital images of the anatomy. They're they're uh, computer generated. They're not actual like cadavers, but they're great because you can zoom in, like you can click and remove the muscles and the nerves, and you can zoom in and go in to the in in between the vertebrae. I mean, there's a, the structures of the vertebrae. You can see them from the inside. Uh, it just uh, it's very inexpensive and a lot of good information. And see, like on, on my drawing over here, Just so that you kind of, you know, don't lose your, your, you know, your, your grasp of what we're doing, you know, because you, you might look at this and like, you know, that's a pretty big, pretty, pretty thin neck, right? But then you might want to do what I did there, like, uh, see, like this is actually where the neck's going to end up. And then this, you know, the nose is going to come out of here. And it looks, it starts to look more realistic, you know, so like, okay, you know, I see where this is going. And see like the back of the neck, you just see that ends up right there along those um, spinous process. Can you see this? Can you see this? No. So this goes, we're going to do that. You see over here, you see my pencil here? At the pit of the neck, I can also bring this over. To show you how far, how far I'm going to drop this opening to the neck here. But I think that we'll leave it, yeah, we're gonna leave it here. Now you guys on your own time over the weekend, finish these off, you know, do them as nice as you can. You wanna add a little bit of highlights with the, with the uh, white chalk, you can. And don't forget to do the back view as well. Now you, you only have to go, you, you look here at the seven and they're all numbered. That's all you have to do. See, those are the mastoid processes. That's the mandible on the, on the front. And I like to put like little suggestions of where the ears are gonna go in, so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing. But I think overall this turned out pretty well. Um, when we need more than the two hours that we have for class for two and a half hours. Uh, but I'll come back to them and make some some corrections before class on on Tuesday. And take some photos of yourself, you know, front view and side view and back view. Well, I guess like I, yeah, back, I mean, unless you have short hair, like you have long hair, like the back view is going to obscure a lot of the everything pretty much. Uh, but that's what I'm gonna try and do. Build up the anatomy and then do my do my portrait on there. I wanna put my eyes on there, my nose, my, my mouth, all those details. Uh, so let me see here, let me, the way we're gonna do this, let me go to,
go to the to the grade book. Uh, professor, are you gonna check our our drawings? Um, I was just making the grade column. Oh, okay, grade. okay, okay. I'm sorry. Just that I lowered the volume so I couldn't l listen if you had said it. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, so let's look at this here. So when I when I call you, turn on your screen and just show me the drawing, what you've been doing right now, and then I'll just put in a grade. It's an automatic hundred to it's more like a attendance grade and to know that you were drawing along and once i call on you and look at your drawing you're free to go so let's start off here with uh, nancy ibarra yes i'm here yeah just show me what you've drawn so far Put them there. Put them there on the screen. Okay, so I'm using my phone. Okay. So I don't know how to. I got. All right. Okay. And the other one's over here. Okay. Watch out the the uh, the neck is the bones of the neck are very thick. You want to you want to make them a little more narrow. Yeah, that's the main thing. So keep you know over the weekend. Look at the drawings that I put on there on the on the announcements on Blackboard and use those to make them a little bit more accurate. Okay, uh, sir. So I don't see anything posted on Blackboard on my side, so I don't know if there's anything wrong with it. Like, I don't see the pictures of the skull posted on the announcement. Maybe, if you scroll down, maybe, did you guys see them or did nobody saw them? Yeah, I think you have to scroll all the way. Yeah, I, because there's some older things on, I don't think I put the date or something, but uh, they, yeah, they'll be there. They should be there. Okay, uh, any other questions, Nancy? No. Okay, I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Now, let's see, Gustavo Martinez. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, sir. Okay, Wait, just show us your drawing. Uh, yeah, let me, just, let me just get it off the uh, real quick. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm, let's see. 
Okay, you could see me, but uh, I think I need to turn off that. You can just, yeah, remove the blurriness. Yeah. Um, the, All right, yeah, move, move them a little closer. I do see that you've been drawing. So. Okay, all right. Keep working on them, you know, make the corrections that, that you need to make, but they look they look good. They are a little close together. Uh, but not a big, not a big, you should have enough space there to develop the anatomy. Yeah, uh, it, it, I, I guess another problem is that I draw too big on, on this paper. Yeah, that is, uh, I mean, they look good. It's up to you if you want to redraw them or. or uh, I'll, 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 uh, I think I'll keep it like, I'll keep them like this, but next, um, next time I won't um, draw as big. Okay. All right, Gustavo, you're, you are excused. All right, have a nice weekend. Okay. Now, Ileana Benavides. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. Well, we just put them closer to, I do see, let see. Okay, they look, yeah, okay. very nice. Are you you're using the tone paper? Yeah. Okay, they look good. Very nice work, Ilan. You have any questions? Uh, no. Okay, all right. I will see you on Tuesday. Bye. Your excuse, yes. Manuel Rodriguez. Yeah, I'm here. All right, got the front view. Okay, all right, that looks pretty good. All right, Manuel, you are excused if you don't have any questions. Good, thank you. Uh, let's see, Andrea Laca. Are you there? Um, yes, I'm here. Okay, show me. All right, very cool. Very nice. Don't forget to do the third view. Okay. What I, you know what, Andrea? I've never. I have never seen your last name in my life. <laughs> yeah. Where Where is it from? Um, I don't know. If I'm being honest, I don't really know where it's from. Uh, is your dad from here or from another country or? Oh, we're, yeah, he's from here. Yeah, I don't think it's a. <laughs> yeah, it's I get cool, that. Though, like it make it makes it stand out, and I was like, kept thinking, like I don't think I've ever, I never seen it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as an artist, you can just go by that, by that, like Picasso, like Picasso. What, what, what was his last name? That can be your artistic name. Uh, okay, Andrea. Well, you're excused. Okay. Have a good, have a good week. David Rodriguez, you're gonna send me the picture, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's because um I used to have a laptop, but that gave out this year, so. I through means I have a, a a traditional desktop, so unfortunately I don't have a camera anymore. Okay, yeah, just email it to me. All right. All right. Josué Rubio. Here. Let's take a look. It is. Okay, got the front view. Front view. And then the side view. All right, looks good. Okay. Well, so you you are excused. You have a good weekend, Ashley Rios. 
I'm here. So I didn't have the big tone paper. Okay. I'm going to go this weekend to buy it, but I was doing it on the small ones right here. Okay, yes, yes. Let me see the other the side view. I can barely move it. There we go. All right. Watch out for the chin. It looks a little big. Yeah, I'm going to end up redrawing them when I buy the bigger paper. Okay, sounds good. You have a you have a good weekend. Likewise. Pam. Pam Martinez. Are you there, Pam? Yeah, one second. Uh... Can you see? A little closer. All right, very nice. Looks good. Do you have any questions, Pam? No, I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay, take care. I'll see you next week. You too. Okay. Cassandra Leal. Okay. Um, I didn't know that we were going to do the... The neck. The neck. So I want to redo this one and for the other one I did I did it this way so that way I had room. All right. Uh, yeah, you're gonna need the like on some of my drawings like I attached the because they weren't big enough like on some of those demos I have on the on the wall like they're paper that is like you know taped together. Mm -hmm. You can you can tape another piece to that. But you have to mount it on like on something like on another board or something. Okay. But yeah, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, but may look good, uh, Cassandra's okay. here. Thank you. you. You have a good weekend. You too. Melanie. Uh, yes. Um. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. All right, very cool. I like your mandala there in the back. Is that? Oh, thank you. And then it's like, is that on? Is there on the wall or like a filter? Oh, it's on the wall. All right. Mm -hmm. It really emphasizes your your face because it's like right behind you. Oh, I guess. <laughs> oh, it looks cool. Okay, Melanie, you have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Joanna Padilla. Okay. Oh, Thank very you. nice. Very cool. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm okay. Okay, Joanna, you have a good week. You too, sir. Thank you. Marvin Figueroa. Oh. All right. Here's that one. And here's the other one. Oh, shit. Okay. Are you going to get tone paper? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it'll just look nicer and it'll be. Yeah, it'll be better. Thank you. Marvin. So yeah, you're 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 free to go. Laura Arellano. I'm here, sir. Let me see. Oh, 
I'm going a little bit slow. Um, I actually need a little bit of help on this one, so I can show you. Okay. Um, but tomorrow I'm gonna go to tutoring with um, Christina. Okay, yeah, Christina's, yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna work on it. Okay. Yeah, I've actually had a little difficult time doing the school part, like right here. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, I've done a lot of lacing. I don't know if you can you can see them right, right here on the sides too. Okay, yeah, just keep working on them and go to the tutoring, and uh, Christina will help you out. Okay. All right. You have a good weekend. Thank you, sir. I also wanted to let you know. Um. I already um, posted the the I. Okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'll give you credit for all those extra drawings you're doing. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. Andy Monjaras. Yes, sir. Uh, it's on two different pages. Okay. Just turn on your camera. All right. That's a one. Okay, and the other one. Just pause while I flip the page. All right. Are you gonna get white? Get uh, tone paper? Would it be better? Yeah, uh, I'm here tomorrow. If you, if you're, I can give you some. If you, you know, if you need. Uh, what time are you gonna be there? I'll be here like until like three o'clock. Um. Okay. Or if you I'll, wanna, I'll go. If you just wanna buy some. Uh, okay. You. Your excuse. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Now, Christina. Yes. So this one turned out a little elongated, so I might just redo that one. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have room for the, the vertebrae and the shoulders. Oh, okay, yeah, you should. Uh... And, yeah, and that one also, when you when you do in when you do the anatomy, the nose is gonna come right to the edge of the. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get big paper anyway. So I think I'll just treat this as practice, <laughs> maybe like a warm up, and then I'll transfer it to the bigger ones. Okay, sounds good. Your excuse. Yeah, we're um, good. For uh, next week, are we gonna be in Zoom for both class days? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, but nobody came, but yeah, like if you want to come and just be in the room with the, with the projector on, you can do that. We just want to get out of the house. Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, Christine Mendes. I'm here. Okay, there you go. Um, so I only did the front facing one. I was kind of struggling with it. Yeah, I know they're, they're, uh, they're difficult. Uh, Mm -hmm. Um. So I kind of forgot to take photos. Should I just redo it, anyways? Uh. I mean, keep working on it. Tweak it. That the the cheekbones look very big. That's the thing. See it right here. Okay. You, you got the weekend. You got those reference images there, so you can you can work on it. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll see you, you next week. Mm -hmm. Samantha. Yes, I'm here. Let me turn on my, my camera. All right. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to move the light or something. Cause... So can you see the first one? The yep. front view? That's, that's the front view? Okay, front view and side view. Yeah, I'm going. And this, this I cannot see it because of the light. And the side view. 
Can you see it? Yeah, they look good. You said you're gonna redo them on tone paper, right? Yeah, correct. I was gonna say I was the one that said that I don't have the tone paper yet, so I will redo them, but I still work on them. Okay. Oh, there you go. Looks good. So you are excused and uh... I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. I'll see you next week. Take care. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. All right. Bye.